Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to our NASCAR Diecast review. And today we have the 2022 Daniel Hemrick AG1 Chevrolet Camaro for Colleague Racing. Now, this was a tricky build, and we're going to go ahead and dive into it. So, if you can, please give it a huge thumbs up. Let's go ahead and check out this custom diecast. All righty, folks. We're at a good old box, and here she is. Wow. Uh, so this paint scheme, first off the, the bat, this was a car that was never made, unfortunately, but it's got a lot of gloss on that thing. Check that out. That is glossed up, my dude. Holy moly. Lots of coats of clear coat there. Uh, but yeah, this is the Daniel Hemrick. Um, I don't know if this is the primary paint scheme or not. He ran so many different uh, cool-looking race cars for his inaugural season at Colley Racing, the 2021 champ, uh, first year in 2022 with the Chevrolet camp. Um, at colleague but so let's go ahead and dive into this die cast review here so you go to the nose de decal here and this one kind of bugs me the way this one came out fellas because you look at where the hood pins are right uh they're they're nowhere even close to where they need to be but that's just the way it's designed right with the problem that really bugs me is this little portion right here um you can't stretch this decal and to get it to come behind uh these uh, headlights if you will and not have the hood pins be in a somewhat general area. So it's either you had the hood pins pretty much behind the headlights, or you just leave it like that and leave a gap. So unfortunately, that's what we had to do there. It doesn't look good in my opinion, uh, but it is what it is. You get Xfinity with the Hemrick. I love the purple Xfinity banners. It's really cool uh, because it's only, it's really a shame, guys. It's really a shame that the only Xfinity cars we ever get are these, the JRM pieces. But it's just cool to be able to get a a different paint scheme and if you know if you want to you know add in another one to the to the mix so to speak why not a, a big machine racing uh style paint scheme that would be really cool but yeah i love these xfinity cars guys you got ag1 right there go to the front uh got camaro got colleg racing got simpson arp sudoku number 11 uh really really uh tough wrap here because you're trying to get everything to line up and it's just these cars, man, they take years to really understand how they work and stuff. It's <laughs> They're not for the faint of heart uh, to go to the left side of this car. I actually like the paint scheme, though. I like kind of this modern uh, zigzag three-tone uh, style with the light green, kind of a dark, uh, kind of a master's golf green, and then you have just a simple white. Uh, looks really good. This little area right here bugs me, though, because you couldn't get this thing to really cover that little inside piece uh, you'd have to pre-paint it and uh one thing i can't stand is pre-painting white because the, the the white paint has oils in it right and it yellows so it might look great at first but over time it's going to yellow and the decals they don't yellow nowhere near as fast um because i don't think they have the, like the pigments or the oils or whatever um paints they have to have so many different things so they're not flammable or whatnot and uh, you get those sort of things uh, but, uh, yeah, that little little gap there really bugs me. I could have took a decal and put it underneath that, but then you'll have a bump. And since it's a white decal, it's kind of transparent. You're going to see just a random bright white bar and everything else be kind of a little bit more subdued. So it's just it's just really um, one of the you know the shortcomings you'll see on some of these builds. Uh, you got Daniel Hamrick right there on the name uh, rail. You got a crap load of Xfinity decals. And this one's, oh, my goodness, that thing's not even really lined up, fellas. That's not good. Yeah, that decal is not where I want it to be. That's, yeah, that's not, that's not good. Well, sometimes it happens, you know. Sometimes the decals move and, you know, you don't really notice it. I think that's one of those cases there. It happens, though. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, Leaf Filter, get to AG1, Live AG1, get Heritage, Ellsworth, and Colleague Companies, number 11. Uh, Xfinity Cup Series, or Cup Series, <laughs> Xfinity Series. Uh, we got um, NASCAR Race Car, Mobile One, Lincoln Welders, Arrowhead Brass. Go to the back end of this die cast, and you got the Live AG1 hashtag there with the number 11. Um, what's interesting is that a lot of these Camaro cars, guys, these Xfinity cars, they are not built to scale. Uh, the decal sets, they never fit. So you're going to have gaps in certain places like this right here. If this was supposed to be a full wrap car, there would be a gigantic gap right here uh, because the side panels are thicker and they're taller than the digital counterparts. Uh, so even though a car looks great on, you know, iRacing or NR2003 or something, uh, it looks great and all. But the real die cast, these are made thicker uh, than the digital counterparts. So like, that's why the 124s, they look so clean. 
and then you look at these, and they're a little bit, they're a little bit chunky, and, and you know, I mean, it, it, it makes the die cast a little heavier, right, so that might add a little bit more value to some collectors, but um, in terms of, you know, decaling and stuff, it really does add, it, it added some challenges, uh, challenges, you generally have to uh, modify your paint schemes to get them to fit. Uh, but uh, I like this green, a very simple kind of a Christmas tree green, if you will, that plastic electric light, um, you know, you would see. But just a simple paint scheme. I just really wish this front decal was a little bit longer because, again, if I would have moved it down, it would have moved where the hood pins are because these are not painted on. These are decaled in. Um, and obviously, when it transitioned there, I can't just put a different color on it and match it. So it's it's just really a perfect storm to, to have a shortcoming. The roof decal is a little bit large. It did trim a little bit on the edges. Um, this is another uh, oopsie do of the Xfinity cars. Uh, the templates generally have larger roof numbers, which is a shame. Uh, sometimes you'll get away with some smaller ones, but yeah, I mean, I've seen numbers that were larger than this. It literally took up the whole, like, it even what almost came down to where the names are. Like, it looked egregiously bad, so... Uh, that's that's one oopsie do about these Xfinity cars. Um, some of them are not well designed uh, for 164 scales, and you got uh, Hembrick AG1 right there on the deck lid, which what a really cool design. Whoever uh, made this, really really good stuff. But uh, yeah, this was a very tricky build to do. Uh, but it's a shame we didn't get a Daniel Hembrick car. We did get a Landon Castle Voyager car, which <laughs> is really freaking cool. Uh, but yeah, I figured I want to do a review on this uh, Hemrick diecast. So that's all for now, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Feel free to roast this car down below and how bad it looks and how bad of a job I did. But that's all uh, for now. Diecast Buffet. Sign it off.